Thanks for joining us for the Executive Series. Today I'm talking to Sean Holthouse, who is the CEO of Catapult International. Sean, thanks for your time. No worries. Good to be here. Now, it's a relatively short story for Catapult in terms of your life as a listed entity. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got some fascinating technology. Why don't we talk about uh, that development? Yeah, well, uh, you know, what Catapult is, is the world leader in wearables for elite sport. So wearables is a pretty hot topic for everybody at the moment, but our niche is elite sport. It's very different from your Fitbits or, um, you know, Garmin's or iWatch or what it might be. And so essentially we service at the moment north of 700 of the world's um, best known sporting teams. So guys like the New York Giants or Real Madrid or AC Milan or Collingwood football team here in Australia. And they use... Um, a wearable device, so a hardware component that they wear at the top of their back during training and during games. You see it quite frequently, don't you? It's, it's um, and in training, it's almost like a brazier. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, the man bra. And um, so a typical device like that collects like a thousand data points per second per athlete and then streams that data to the coaches on the sidelines, then up into the cloud. And the real magic is the analytics that sit on top of that data and turn it essentially into to wisdom about um, improving performance or minimising injury, which are the two big objectives of, uh, of elite sport. So, so when I say we're the world leader in this space, that is by pretty much every metric. So um, our market share of 700 teams is many, many times the market share of, of the number two player in the world. Um, but if you add up both our market share and all the other players in this space, we would estimate that, that um, that's only covering less than 10% of the addressable market. So there's huge growth opportunities with that greenfield market in elite sport around the world that hasn't been tapped yet. Now, you've just reported results, um, quite good numbers. What did you see as some of the features of the period? Yeah, so uh, first half for us is really a, a, um, about a strong growth story. So um, revenue grew by 58% um, to just over $7 million. And uh, to put that in context, I'll say a couple of things. First of all, uh, a lot of Catapult's business and an increasing amount is about selling on subscription. So these long tail 36-month uh, subscription agreements where we recognise revenue monthly. Um, so that means that looking at revenue is a little bit looking at the review mirror in terms of our, our sales performance. Um, also, uh, because of selling to Elite Sport, which is very seasonal by nature, you know, they have a pre-season, then a competition. Our sales are heavily skewed towards the second half. So um, historically, you know, that overlaid on our growth story means that second half numbers are much stronger than first. So one of the things that we, we do to explain that to investors is report not just revenue, but sales for the yep. half. Um, so we call that total contract value. And for us, that grew by 75% uh, um, this half to $14 million. So all of that $14 million will be flowing into revenue. Um, you know, some upfront because we're selling some of our products on a capital sales model, but a lot delayed. Um, so internally, uh, when we talk about how we're growing as a business or when we incent our sales guys with commission, we're using that, that sales number and that TCV number. And, you know, really we're trying to educate the market that this is what you look at to measure Catapult. And it's probably a message that's resonating with institutional investors who, you know, are spending the time getting across it. Um, and probably something that'll take a little bit more time for retail investors to understand. So. So that's 75% um, growth on sales, and then the other key metrics we've provided to the market have all almost doubled. So almost doubled our subscription fleet um, compared to last year, um, almost doubled our uh, cash receipts to $10 million, and did double our annualised run rate, which is very much a SaaS term that describes just how that subscription business is, is building. So it essentially means that we're taking in locked-in revenue of $9.4 million into this calendar year, um, just, just from that subscription revenue. Okay, as far as the medium term is concerned, if you're considered the incumbent, mm. uh, how are you dealing with the, the bigger term picture? So, you know, I would d describe our strategy as three steps. Um, the first step is, um, is uh, uh, we, we would say, to win the land grab of elite sport with 90% of it at Greenfield and us having such a dominant position. And the technology being fundamentally really sticky and we have incredible customer retention rates. Um, and that is because the more you accumulate data, the more valuable the data is to you as a team. So um, we're trying to, to hoover up as much of that land grab around the world as possible. So as many of those elite sports teams. 
But once you've secured um, elite sport as a client base, that's got real specialness. It's not like um, owning all architects or owning all accountants, for instance. And that is because elite sport is this um, perennial marketing platform. Uh, you know, you can see that by the sponsorship money that flows into elite sport. If you want to sell a watch, you sponsor Roger Federer. If you want to um, uh, sell multivitamins, you sponsor Ricky Ponting. Basically, um, it influences consumer buying behavior everywhere. So um, one of the things that um, we are, are looking to do as a, as a sort of third step of our business model is um, uh, start building equity around our brand from that association with all these amazing teams. Um, and that will probably percolate into um, consumer business that might be a takedown version of our technology or, or data licensing or brand licensing. Um, so is that something along the lines of a Fitbit or sort of um, more uh, dumbed down sort of technology, if you like? Yeah, that's one possibility. You know, our view is if you own elite sport, um, it, it just preserves opportunities for you in the consumer space because of how influential it is. But in between those two, um, Teams are not the only users of, of this sort of sports data. It's so predictive and insightful and explanatory. There's all sorts of other markets for the sort of data that we collect from our devices. And so um, those markets are overlays on um, sports broadcasts, um, things like second screen apps, sports betting, uh, fan engagement apps. So um, we see lots of monetization opportunities in having secured elite sport to then um, uh, start monetizing the data out of game day and uh, we've taken some significant steps towards activating that new revenue line in the last half via some league-wide deals we've done with, that, with the AFL and with the ARU here in Australia, which we really see as, um, as prototypes for the sorts of league-wide deals that, um, that include uh, game day data monetization that, that we'll be doing in leagues around the world. Sean, great insights into Catapult. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. And thanks for joining us for the Executive Series.